Just Fooling Again by Diane Brown. Some people said that Roy had a great deal of imagination and that he was a very clever boy. Others just said that he lied a great deal of the time. You can never tell whether that boy is telling the truth or not, they would say. The trouble was that Roy liked to fool people. Some children try to fool people now and then, but Roy thought of ways to fool people almost every day. At first, it seemed as if Roy were just trying to be clever. Once he said to his mother, Mama, there is a woman in our yard making a lot of noise. Come and look. When his mother went to look, she saw nobody. Then he laughed and said, I am talking about that tree over there. It's making a lot of noise. And isn't it called a woman's tongue? His mother looked at the tree in surprise. It was covered in brown pods, and as the breeze blew, the pods made a loud noise. She remembered that the tree was called woman's tongue because of the noise it made. Roy, she said, don't you have anything to do besides fooling people? But she smiled and thought that he was very clever and had quite an imagination. Another time, he ran into the classroom at school and shouted, There's an old man hanging from the electric wire outside. He is hanging by his beard. When the children ran outside, they did not see any old man hanging by his beard from the electric wire. Then Roy laughed and shouted, Don't you see the old man's beard on the wire? He said, Don't you know that the thing that looks like a bird's nest on the wire is called old man's beard? Of course the children knew that. They just had not thought about it. They laughed and thought it was very clever of Roy to have fooled them like that. Soon, they got used to Roy's tricks. They were almost like riddles, and it was fun to try and find out what he meant. So one day when he said, there's a duppy giving away cherries outside, the children thought it very funny. They knew it was a trick but they ran outside to see what Roy had thought of this time. They all laughed when he said, there is the duppy cherry tree and the cherries are falling off. So the duppy is giving them away. Soon everybody was talking about Roy in the village. Most people said that he was very clever and had a very good imagination, but some of the old people did not agree. They said that fooling people was not a good thing. They said it was really just like lying. After a while, Roy ran out of ideas. He couldn't think of clever ways to fool people anymore, but he still went on playing tricks. One day, while his mother was cooking, he ran into the kitchen. Mama, he shouted, remember the clothes that were hanging on the line? Well, a cow is in the yard and it is eating the clothes. His mother left the food on the fire and ran outside. Her best clothes were on the line. Of course she found that there was no cow eating the clothes. Then she remembered the food on the stove and when she got back inside, it was almost too late. The food had begun to stick to the pot. She did not think that Roy was funny this time. She did not think that he was clever and had a good imagination. Roy, this has got to stop. She said, there's a time and place for everything. We almost had burnt food for dinner. It is very silly to fool people when they are doing something important. Roy should have learned his lesson from that, but he did not. He just went on fooling people. One day when old man Joe was buying a bag of cornmeal in the shop, Roy called to him. Mr. Joe, he said. Your donkey is running away with the cart and all the things in the cart are dropping out on the road. Old man Joe was so frightened that he dropped the bag of cornmeal and ran outside to catch the donkey. When he got there, he saw the donkey still standing quietly in front of the cart. He did not think that Roy was funny at all because the bag of cornmeal that he dropped had opened. The cornmeal was all over the dirty ground and not only did old man Joe have to pay for the bag, but he had to buy another one. A few days later, when his teacher was working on some papers, Roy rushed into the classroom. 
Teacher, teacher, he cried. There's a mad dog in the yard and it's attacking the children. The teacher jumped up so quickly that the table turned over and the papers flew all around the room. Of course, she found that there was no mad dog in the yard and the children were playing bat and ball quite happily. Roy helped her to pick up the papers, but some had blown through the windows and could not be found. The teacher was vexed with him. Roy, she said, I know that you are only trying to have some fun, but it is not funny when you make trouble for other people. Those papers were very important to me. Take care that you are not being too clever for your own good. You should use your imagination in your lessons and then you might be able to do some good work. Roy thought about what his teacher had said, but one day he had such a great idea that he just had to try it out. So early the next morning, he stood by the school gate. As soon as the children got to the gate, Roy said, Teacher asked me to tell you that there is no school today. The children believed Roy. They felt that he would never fool them about such a serious thing. It took the teacher a long time to find out why the children had not come to school. Roy stayed with her in the classroom and every now and then he would say, Teacher, I wonder where the other children are. So she did not think that he had fooled them all again. In fact, it was not until some parents came to ask why there was no school that she realized what had happened. Roy was punished by both his teacher and his mother because this time he had gone too far. He should not have fooled the children about something as serious as going to school. By now, everybody in the village was tired of Roy and his tricks. Many of them agreed with the old people and said that Roy just told lies. Roy was really a clever boy and he realized that he had taken things too far. He knew that the people were vexed with him. Even his friends did not seem to think he was funny anymore. So Roy tried very hard not to fool people and it seemed as if he had learned his lesson. Then one evening, just as it was getting dark, he was walking home through the bush when he heard a strange noise. It was a funny, whirring sound, like the flapping of many birds' wings. Then it became a buzzing, like the noise of hundreds of bees. Roy became very frightened because he could not imagine what it was and he could not tell where it was coming from. It sounded as if it came first from one side and then from the other. Roy looked around for somewhere to hide, but before he could make up his mind whether to climb a tree or lie down in the grass, he saw it. It was the strangest thing he had ever seen, and it was above him in the sky. It was like a long pod, but it seemed to be made of some kind of silver metal. It seemed bigger than a plane. In fact, it was bigger than anything he had ever seen. Closer and closer it came until it was almost right above him. He wondered whether it would come right down and crush him. Then it stopped, and the strange sound stopped also. Suddenly, a great white light came out of it and lit up the ground where Roy was standing. It made everything as bright as day. Roy wondered if he could be imagining it, but when he shut his eyes and opened them again, the strange machine was still above him. Now he was sure he was not imagining it. Then suddenly, the whirring and the buzzing sound started again. The trees and grass waved and bent as a great breeze blew out of the machine. Then it went up in the sky and disappeared. Roy wondered what it was, and then he knew. It's a spaceship, he said to himself. I have read about them, and this is how they always behave. I have seen a spaceship. And with that thought, he ran as fast as he could to the village to give them the news. When he got to the village, he saw a number of people in the shop. He rushed in and shouted, I just saw a spaceship. I was walking home when this big silver thing with bright lights almost came down on top of me. 
Roy had expected that everybody would be excited by what he had to say. The people in the shop did seem excited, but not in the way that Roy had expected. In fact, they seemed more vexed than excited. They were all talking at once, but something was wrong. It took Roy a few minutes to realize that they were talking about him and shouting at him. What is this lie you are telling now, boy? shouted old man Joe. Just fooling again, said a young man. Why don't you go home and leave big people alone? But I tell you, I did see a spaceship, cried Roy. I am not fooling you. It is true. Now, boy, said old man Joe, everybody knows that you are noted for lying. What you need is a good beating, and I would do it. It's just that I don't want to hurt your mother's feelings. Some people laughed when they heard old man Joe say that. Another man said, it is true. You can't expect anything more from this boy. Roy turned around and left the shop. He felt very much like crying. Outside, he saw his teacher, who was just coming to buy something. What is it, Roy? She said. What have you done now? I saw a spaceship when I was walking through the bush, he replied. I really did see it above me, but nobody believes me. Did you really expect them to believe you? Asked his teacher. You have made a great deal of trouble for people in this village with your tricks. But I do not fool people anymore, said Roy. Well, that's the trouble, Roy, said his teacher. When you fool people as much as you have, nobody will believe you anymore, even when you are telling the truth. Do you believe me, teacher? Asked Roy sadly. Well, she replied, I know that you have been trying to do better, but I also know that you have a great imagination. I did not imagine it, teacher, he cried. I really saw it. It was a machine that made a funny noise and had a bright light. The light was as bright as day. Roy, she said, if you did see something, perhaps it was not really a spaceship. Now, go home to your mother before you get into any more trouble. We will talk about it tomorrow at school. As Roy walked home, he felt very sad. He had finally learned his lesson, though it seemed as if it was all too late. He knew he had seen something, and he really believed it was a spaceship. He realized that his mother would also be vexed if he told her about what he had seen. He wished with all his heart that there was somebody who would believe him, somebody who could tell him whether he had seen a spaceship or not. It was very important to him. The end. So, indeed, this is kind of a reminder of the boy who cried wolf story. Many times people will trick people, fool people, and when they are at a point where they really need somebody to believe in them or trust them, no one can because they have already broken that trust. So please remember it's important to always be honest, be upfront, be transparent. It's the best way, okay? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked the story and I'll see you next week with another story. Until then, bye-bye.